And we are really pushing this hitch hauler bar right here to the max. This thing is bouncing around. I was driving behind John on the way over here. This thing is not rated for this much weight, but we put it through that and it holds up. It's only rated for like 300 pounds and this is much more than 300 pounds. This is our seven and a quarter inch Windsor One tongue and groove. This is the widest tongue and groove that we have ever, well, we haven't done it yet. This is the widest one we'll ever install. It's the widest one they make, I believe. And this is going on the ceiling where we've been doing all the fireplace work, all the electrical stuff that I was, you know, crucified for in the comment section that I corrected just to my credit. But um, yeah, this is what we're gonna be putting up there. But before we put this up there, what we need to do, I wanna run some beams going across that room. The problem is that room is 18 and a half foot long. And I just called the lumber yard and they're like, no, we don't have anything. The, the longest we're gonna have is 16 foot. So we'd have seams everywhere. So we got this idea and we're gonna try to basically book match, resaw the 16 footers and book match them. So it looks like the grain and everything matches. Cause the problem with, you know, matching white oak, even if you match the grain, the color, the color is the deal breaker. I don't want to look up in that ceiling and see like, oh yeah, there's a splice right there. I want it to be like the best that it can be. So we're going to get some four quarter, resaw it and see if this works. If it does, we're going to go ahead and get all the material that we need to make five beams going across that ceiling. So even though I'm excited about this Windsor here, we can't put it in yet because I want to put those beams in first, but this is a piece of the puzzle that I'm so glad that we're going to have here because the vision is really coming to life. So we got to unload this, go get that piece. We got a lot to do, a lot of experimenting to mess around with. So let's do it. All right, so we got all of our Windsor out. We just picked this board up. This is four quarter white oak. And when we rip this in half, we're only gonna end up with like three eighths or so, cause this is a, a full inch. Then we minus the blade. So it'll be somewhere three eighths, nine, uh, seven sixteenths. So we're gonna try to rip this down, just resaw it right in half. But I was up there talking to the guys at the lumber yard, plywood company, and they were like, all right, if what you're trying to do, if you want, we can resaw it for you. It'll just take like 45 minutes. So I was like, well, let's try this one. If it works, then I'll call in an order and say, hey, I need X amount of these white oak boards resawed right in half. And they're gonna do it. It's a dollar a foot for them to do it. So this 14 footer would cost me 14 more dollars to get it resawed. But I would turn this 14 footer into a 28 linear feet that I can use and have that book match grain. I think it's grain match. I don't think it's a book match. Just like a, no, it is a book match because we're cutting it in half and then folding it open like a book. And that's where we're going to get the same color and the same grain. So we're going to try this out. So we pushed the board all the way through for the resaw and honestly, it's a little rough. Like in this area, we start waving around and getting real thin right here. Kind of bumps out right here. You can see obviously the reverse image of that. So very inconsistent and very cumbersome, honestly, to push this stuff through the bandsaw. I think a dollar a foot for them to do this sounds really good. So basically, we're gonna let them do it, but we wanted to try this out. And I thought we'd actually do better even with this guide that my friend Tom told me to get. And this thing works really good, but I think it's just these boards are so awkward to push through that even this guy couldn't help us out with it. But <laughs> yeah, let's uh, see how the book match grain looks at least, cause that's the whole experiment with this. This, this plan worked out really well. We have our long 28 foot run here, takes up the whole garage and goes out into the driveway. 
And the grain is beautiful if you ignore the bad bandsaw work and all the, the junk in that. But the, the grain is gorgeous. Freaking awesome. Love white oak. Probably my favorite looking wood. No contest. But this is the joint right here and this is why we want to rip a full board in half because there's no way we're getting you know this white oak to match like I mentioned. But if we do this book match, I mean look at that. That is just perfect. And if we wanted to, we could cut right in the middle of that knot, right in the middle of that knot. No matter where, no matter where you cut this and bring it together, it's going to match. So if I cut six inches off this side, I got to cut six inches off this side. When they come together, they will be perfect. So when I put my clear coat on them and everything like that, they're going to look good. But you can see just how perfect that matches. And it's going to be 20 foot up in the on the ceiling so it's not like you're really going to see the difference there the biggest concern with this is when you put your finish on white oak from board to board the color varies so much but since we know we're coming out of the same exact board it's going to be the perfect match here so what i'll do here since these are going to be three eighths of an inch thick i'll put glue in there i'll put probably like a pinch dog here and like bring them together and then you know we'll make our own wood filler out of sawdust and uh, you know sawdust straight from this and also glue and then I really think after sanding you're not going to be able to catch that seam. I'm really confident in the way this is going to work. I say we go for it. It's the only way I'm going to get white oak beams up there that are 18 and a half foot long. So here's one concern that we thought of but it's not an issue at all so when you have your your box beam right it's just a essentially a faux beam we're going to miter there bring this over miter there come back up so we end up with this u shape our framing goes in here this is our framing lumber we nail into here screw into there whatever so the problem is, you know, yeah, we can get this to match up with color and that looks good. But what about this, this one here? You know, what about this one here? If, if that one there is what's laying on the floor here, aren't these going to be different colors? Yes, they will. We don't even have to worry about trying to match those because the way the natural light acts on a beam anyways, you will never see this. So it could be, a light color, a dark color, doesn't matter. When you're looking up at that beam, one side of it looks like, you know, this here. The bottom's gonna have all shadow on it anyways. It's not gonna matter. The only thing that gonna, is gonna matter is the consistency of the grain and the color on that particular piece as it makes the run all the way through. And this is gonna be really cool to see this. I, I've never seen anyone do this. We literally just thought of this, but I'm sure it's out there. I'm sure people have done it um, to get longer faux beams. We're basically just building beams and veneering them in white oak. That's essentially what we're doing. Yeah, this is going to be awesome. I called around. I could not find anyone who has white oak this long, which just doesn't surprise me. That would be a gigantic tree. I mean, I'm surprised they even do like 14s and 16 white oaks. Pretty, pretty wild. So this is going to be not that expensive either. I paid $36 for this board and it yields two. So essentially I'm paying $36 per beam side. So that puts me just over a hundred bucks per beam. So $500 all in on the white oak for the beams. That's not bad at all. Plus the, I do got to add them doing the resaw, which to me is not an option. I need to practice my resawing here. Something's going on. Probably could have dropped my guide down a little bit more, but this is going to be awesome. All right, so we're in the process of cutting right on that knot like I was talking about, and my battery died, which brings up a perfect downtime to let you guys know. If you want to buy this saw, I'm going to sell it. There's nothing wrong with it. I love the saw. The only thing is it's battery, and I was kind of dumb when I made my dedicated shop saw battery saw. I thought I was going to take it in the field and you know, oh, if we need another saw here, you could, it's never leaving here. So I want to get a corded saw. I'm going to replace it with the same exact saw, but corded. That's literally the only thing that is wrong with it is that it's not corded. So if you're interested in this, I'm going to let it go for 1200. I paid 1500 for it and uh, I'll even throw in the Bluetooth chip 
for the cordless uh, dust extraction, which is a $50 value. And just so you can know which model this is, if you're interested in it, it is, this is GSL04M1 right here online, $14.99. That's the exact saw that we're looking at right here. The only thing this does not include is the Kaizen fence. I'm not going to sell my Kaizen fence with it. That is mine. So if you want your own Kaizen fence, my friend Tom makes these and uh, I'll leave a link to his website below. But these fences are awesome and he custom did this one for me in the Makita Teal. So that's for sale. We're waiting for a battery to charge. You have to be local. Just be in the Dallas-Fort Worth area or at least be willing to drive here. I'm not gonna ship it. You can come here and pick it up. You'll, you'll take it straight from here to your truck or your car or whatever. And uh, yeah, and then I'll have the money to buy the corded one. So there you go, if, if you're interested. Oh yeah, we got two bars now, so I can finish the cut. And the other thing that was coming to mind while we were kind of going through this whole process is since these are gonna be 3 eighths of an inch thick, they're gonna be easy to install. Look at the flex. That means we could snap these things into place exactly where we want them. <laughs> That's gonna be awesome. We could just cut it a little tight pinch fitted on the glue joint because we're not going to be able to have any like you know biscuit or anything and it. it's too thin so it'll be a pinch fit with glue I think it's going to be awesome so I'll cut the other side and we'll see how this looks <laughs> that's pretty crazy right there that is awesome is like roughly in the center. You can even see like that same gap in that knot, like continue. This is freaking amazing. Oh man. We're gonna go now and pick out our boards. I'm super pumped about this. I'm almost as pumped about this as I am about this. This ceiling is gonna be freaking sweet. getting those boards prepped for us what we're doing is we're gonna lay out where we want these beams we want five beams going all in one direction and it's gonna be perpendicular to what what you see on the floor so the flooring is obviously going this way we want the beams intersecting the floor this way so the beams themselves will not intersect each other they will only run in one direction so we'll have one all the way two three four five all the way down equally spaced as much as possible when you have obstacles vents fixtures you know smoke detectors you kind of got to move well smoke detector we can move location but some things like the stuff we already moved like vents and lights we don't want to move those again because they're right where we want them so we can kind of move the beam over inches you know to cheat it a little bit and it's so high up and they're so spaced you won't ever see it the point is to make it just you know, look as cohesive as possible and uh, avoiding those obstacles. So five beams all going in this direction. And I just realized something, only four of these are gonna need to have seams, like the uh, book match seams, because we have a little bump out right here that doesn't need it. So we are gonna get busy laying out exactly where we want these, doing our chalk lines, and maybe by that time, they'll have our stuff ready for us. So after some layout, you can see our chalk lines up on the ceiling now. You can see that first one is going to fall right into that light that we moved. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move that in front of the beam, like going towards the mantle. So it's pretty much hidden, so it'll go in closer. That makes more sense to me. This one right here is good, no obstacles in the way. 
And then the fixture that we moved that the ceiling fan was on, if you've been following along, it used to be in that hole and now it's where the wires are coming out. Well, that actually almost fell in the center of these two beams. Not quite, it's a little more uh, to the right there, but we're gonna leave that as it is. I think it's close enough and it's centered on that. I could take it back a little bit more, but that joist, if you remember, is running right on that side, so I still don't think I would be dead center, so I'm not gonna battle with that one. And then this one here, this one hit a smoke detector. We can move that one easily. This one right here, the next one barely crossed or barely missed that vent over there. And it was the same with that other one next to the vent on the other side over there. We cleared those. And then here, we barely missed this fixture. So there's our five beams laid out. Sorry for the brightness in here. It's just real bright and then the ceiling's white. So it's kind of hard to show this, but that is what we're working with. And I'm doing these beams eight inches by eight inches, which some of you may think like that's pretty small for, you know, 20 foot ceiling for what we're working with. But the reason I don't want to do anything bigger than that is because when you get up here, you know, when you, by the time you walk up here, you're getting closer to these beams. So I don't want some just gigantic beam like at eye level right here. I think it would be kind of obnoxious, especially for this house. So I think just, you know, eight inch beams, just a little something up there split up equally. I think it's gonna work out really good. So uh, yeah, this is gonna be an awesome looking ceiling when all is said and done. And it's been a few hours now and I think our material is probably ready. So we're gonna go grab that. So we're about to pull up, get our material plywood company here. And I just realized something, when they rip these down for us or resaw them, they're not gonna keep them in order for our book match. So we're gonna have like a memory, not a memory, but like a matching game type thing going on because we're gonna lay these out in the driveway and garage and try to figure out which one goes with which. So. I just realized that's gonna be fun. This is the part that was resawed. It still has all that resaw dust and it is nice. So that is what we're working with right there. Let me flip this one over. That is freaking amazing. That is freshly cut right there. And those are gonna make for some beautiful freaking white oak beams. And I'm not even gonna like, I like the rough saw and look of this. It's not super, super rustic, but it's not like super polished and finished, so it gives it that kind of more authentic beam look. I'm not gonna send them through the planer or anything. Maybe just a light sanding, maybe, just to kind of knock down some, you know, high spots or really rough spots, but this looks freaking awesome. Like, look at that grain right there. Look at that detail on the saw blade. That's super cool. <laughs> that is awesome. And we got a consistent thickness. You'll see they're a little cupped. Hopefully that comes out of it. I doubt it, but hey, we're working with what we got. They're three eighths now, so they're more susceptible to that cupping. All right guys, so there we have it. We have all the materials for that ceiling in there. And now that I'm seeing this here, I'm thinking that is a lot of weight on that ceiling. But I think it should be fine because it's all spread out. And when we make the beams, when we put our blocking in stuff for that, we're gonna put blocking in to support it. So it's gonna really, I think it's gonna be fine. I hope so. If it caves in, let's just hope no one's in there at that time. No, it, should, it shouldn't have an issue. But 
This is awesome, tongue and groove, freaking straight as an arrow from Windsor, true three quarter of, a, of an inch thick. This right here, this, some of these pieces, like the first two I think they tried are a little off because like you can see this piece right here is thinner than the bottom piece and that's that same book match. So like right here we got like a quarter, right here we got like a half. So we will have to play with that and when we go to do the book match and like shim this one out to match that one when we glue it up. So this is tricky. This is gonna be hard to do. I really wish these things were less than 16 foot, but we're working with 18 and a half. Like I said, this is all we got. We're gonna make this work. So some days that's how it goes. We got everything laid out. We got our material. Nothing really got installed, but it's a material handling type day. So yeah, next time we'll be framing for 10 year windows. We got this framing lumber right here and maybe even putting some blocking in.